In this video we're going to look at how we 3D model the front component of our birdhouse from the bird table uh, activity that we've been working on as part of our orthographics and our isometrics. Now to start with that we're going to look at the dimensions that are part of this front panel and then in other videos we'll look at how we model the base and how we model the roof. Now starting with the front, in order to get that file what we need to do is we need to navigate into Inventor, go to the new option in Inventor, select the metric option and then the standard millimetre IPT, making sure that we're definitely working in metric, definitely working in millimetres so that we don't have a part that is created in inches. When we click create, it will start off with a new file for us and we want to go into sketch mode. Now when we open up sketch mode by clicking on this icon up at the top, it gives us three different work planes that we can work on. It gives us our XY plane, it gives us our YZ plane and it gives us our XZ plane. Now we tend to work on the XY for our uh, vertical and horizontal or our height and our length or we look at the X and Z for our length and our depth. Because we're going to draw the front of the object, so we're going to start by looking at the front component here, we're going to model it on this surface, that's going to be our elevation that we're going to draw. What we'll do is we'll start by selecting the front plane here and choosing that XY option. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with a rectangle and then we're going to subtract parts off of it. We could try and draw the outline shape of it, but it might be a little bit more appropriate for us to draw a kind of box shape and subtract from that extrusion. That way we can learn a couple of extra commands that we can help us out with later on. So we're going to choose the rectangle option and instead of choosing the automatic two point rectangle, we're going to look at using the two point center rectangle. This means that we can snap right to the center origin. So it goes green when I click and then I move out up towards the top right and click again. It doesn't matter what size it is just now because what we're going to do is we're going to use dimension to add those sizes. To get those sizes, we need to add up the three lengths along the bottom and then take the overall height here. The overall height is 245, which is nice and straightforward, but we now need to add these three together. The 75 and 75 make 150 and adding another 100 adds 250 to make along the bottom. So 250 by 245. We use dimension to add the height first of all, clicking once on that line and clicking out to the side and then putting 245. It's grown too big for the screen, but if I click on my view cube, it fills the screen again. If I then click along the bottom and click again, I can input my 250. Once I've got that size for that rectangle, I can finish sketch. You can see it's zoomed back in, so to zoom back out, I'll use front. And then I'm going to extrude. The extrude command is going to allow us to add depth to our profile. So our 2D shape is called our profile. By using the extrude command, we convert it to a 3D solid. So clicking extrude. I'm going to click the top left corner just so we can see how this would look in 3D. So using our view cube, clicking on the top corner. I can then add my depth. Just now it's set to 10. I want to make sure that I've got the right depth. You can see from the drawing here that it's 20. So if I go back into Inventor, change my distance to 20, you can see it increases the thickness of the extrusion and I can click OK. Just before I do that, you can see I can extrude in different directions and I can extrude symmetrically. It's always good wherever possible to extrude symmetrically because what it does is it keeps our work planes in the centre of our object and that can be handy later on too. Now that I have that, I've got two options about how I can add the slope to the edge of the birdhouse front. Because it's a 45 degree angle, I can use the chamfer command or I can draw the profile of a triangle and I can subtract it from my solid. I'm going to show you both methods. As I said, because it's a 45 degree slope, we can use the chamfer edit up in the top corner here and I select the edges that I want to chamfer. Now by default it sets to 2, so I would need to work out the length of my chamfer in order to get that to the right size. It tells me it's 45 degrees, which is the default size of angle for a chamfer. And you can see the height from the bottom to where the chamfer starts there is 120. What I'd then be able to do is I'd be able to get a starting point, but it doesn't tell me how far along it goes. I actually need to half the length of here to get the right size for my chamfer. So half of 250 is 125. Going back into Inventor, if I change that to 125, you can see it meets perfectly at the top. 
If I had that size wrong, say I'd calculated 120, it wouldn't meet in the middle. It would stop a little bit short. If I increased it to too large a size, you can see it won't work and it comes up with this error message and that's because the two chamfers are crossing over each other. So we need to make sure it's set to 125. That would give us our little peak at the front. The alternative method to doing that is to start a sketch on the front of the object. So start a sketch, click on the front of the object and it brings me back into sketch mode. What I'm able to do is using my line tool, if I start from somewhere down here, click up to the top corner, click along to the middle and click to join these two up. Now it goes green whenever I'm hovering over an exact point. What I've been able to draw, if I spin into 3D, is just I've got a little triangle in the top left corner. What I'm able to do is dimension that using those sizes we first looked at, that 120 from the bottom. Click dimension, click this bottom line once, click the bottom corner of the triangle and move out to the side. I can then add in my dimension of 120. Because I know that snaps exactly in the middle, using the work planes as a guide, but also that little green dot earlier on, I can finish the sketch knowing that that's exactly right. Now if I extrude, the little triangle will highlight red, meaning I can extrude it. It automatically goes forwards because it wants to add material because that's the default setting for extrude. If I change it to be a subtraction using the cut option, because it's set to the same thickness, it will take it all the way through. If I had that only set to 10, it would only cut part of the way through. A quick way to make sure it cuts through everything is change from distance setting to the all setting and it cuts through all the surfaces it can come into contact with. I click OK and I have that completed. I could repeat the process by starting a sketch on the front and repeating the triangle shape again and extruding and using subtract or I could use the mirror option. The mirror option will take something we've already created and it will create an exact mirror image of it using one of the work planes as a mirror. The first thing I need to do is select the feature that I want to repeat which is my extrusion here. You can see it's selected that because it's highlighted blue. I then need to choose the mirror plane that I want to reflect in. I do this by going into the origin folder, clicking the little plus beside it and selecting which plane I want to mirror in. Because I want a reflection in the YZ plane, I click on the little icon for that. And you can see the little green temporary line shows where it will reflect to. Now that I'm happy with that, I can click OK. And looking at the front, I have the perfect peak shape at the front of the bird table. If at any point I realise I've made a mistake or I need to increase the size of that extrusion, if I was to go into sketch and edit it, it would update both of the sides. Now I need to add on my little archway to the front of the bird table. To do that, I start a sketch on the front surface again. And this time, I need to work out the position of where the arch is going to be, the overall height of it, and how I get that little circular shape on the top, for which there's two options. I'm going to start by getting the position of a rectangle that I can work out using the sizes that exist already. So I'm going to start a rectangle 75 in from the side. I'm going to make it 100 wide and I'm going to make it go 120 up because that's where it gets me to the centre of that circle. To do that, I'm going to switch from being in the centre point rectangle tool to being in the 2.1. I just click to snap along that bottom line and then I'm going to approximately add in a rectangle sitting below that centre. I go to dimension and this time I dimension from the left line, clicking once, to that first line here, clicking again and then I move down here and that allows me to dimension the space between these two lines. I choose 75 and I'll do the same from the other side, clicking once, clicking again and then clicking down at the bottom. If I now try and add the 100 by clicking there, clicking there and clicking again, it comes up with this over constrained error. That means that there's too many sizes and they're all going to try and pull the shape in too many different directions. So it won't allow us to put that there. But because I know my length overall was 250, and because that's 75 and 75, the 100 will definitely be correct. The next thing is to add a dimension from the bottom to the top. So clicking once, clicking again and moving out to the side, making it 120. Now it leaves me with the time to add on the circle at the top. 
because the circle is the same width as this space here, I know its diameter, so I can click the circle here, go along this line until it snaps green there, and then move out until it snaps against the edge of my rectangle. Now if I finish sketch, spin it onto its edge, and use extrude, you can see that it's got multiple different profiles, and it can confuse Inventor for what it's supposed to extrude. To remove that, if we go back into our sketch just by double clicking it, we can trim out the lines that we no longer need by using the trim command. It will snip off this line and off this line too. Now that that's gone and I finish sketch, you can see I'm left with a perfect archway. I can choose extrude, I can select the arch shape, I can change it to a subtraction using the cut option, and I can make sure it goes through all surfaces and click OK. And at that point, what I'm able to see is that I've created the part as it's shown in the drawings on our document. At that stage, I would save it into my drive and I could start manipulating the materials to get it to look like wood as it tells you in the instructions.